Welcome back to Sound Lab Studios. Today we're going to be talking about EEV valves. We'll look at the power heads and some of the tools that I use to be able to test these, these components out. Alright, we have two main components that make up an EEV valve. One is the valve body assembly. Normally have a stainless steel casing on here. Um, there are times that you do have to clean this up, polish it back up, because it will get some um, light corrosion built up on it. Uh, referred to as a white rust, it's where the stainless steel oxidizes from a lot of moisture and, and the coldness of the water. And then the other component is a power head or referred to as an EEV valve solenoid coil. You know, it's just sliding on there, it locks into place. This device creates a magnetic field that pulses clockwise or counterclockwise to be able to open and control the needle valve. Now there's a needle inside this that has some um, um, neodymium magnets on it as well. And they interact with the magnetic field from this part. And between the two, the, you know, the, this one creating a um, magnetic pulse that's um, opening or closing interacts with the needle valve here and allows refrigerant to be able to flow through this valve. Now, I will, um, on a maintenance, I'll take and clean this up and polish it up with either some sand cloth or another tool that I'll show you here in just a second. And then I also clean up the little electrodes inside here. Now, if I think this um, power head or the EEV valve has failed and there's a problem with it, what I have to do is test out this coil. And the way I'm going to do that here with the, um, this is a, out of a Daikin system. It's a Daikin unitary, which is ducted residential equipment. What do I need to do is test the, um, the wires here. So I've got a six prong plug with five wires on it. Number one, two, three, four. Number five is empty. Number six is all by itself and that's our common wire there. So what I need to do is I need to go across from um, number one, two, three, four to six and see what my um, ohms readings are. So I've put my meter in ohms here and I go across one to six. I've got roughly 47 ohms. Go to two to six. 47 ohms. Three to six. 47 ohms. And four to six. Got 47 ohms. If this thing tests in between 40 to 50 ohms, then this um, power head is going to be good. Now there are several different ways that I can, um, you know, try to open up this valve here. I've got a couple tools that I use. Now there's one that, that um, works on some EEV valves but does not work on the ones that are used in Amana and also the Daikin equipment. And it's one put out by CPS here. Now it's got one large magnet inside it and it slides over the EEV valve and you can turn it clockwise or counterclockwise to be able to open and close this valve. Now I've had success with this with other uh, manufacturers valves but they do not work with the uh, MANA or the Daikin valve but it's the CPS solenoid magnet. The one that works with the, the Daikin product is this little magnet right here. Now it's got the markings that show, you know, the turn this way for open, turn this way for close, so I can slide it over and I can open up a valve and see if I can get this valve unstuck. You know, there are times where if I can't open it with this magnet, then I'm probably going to wind up having to replace this valve. Now through Daikin parts, you can get this part number right here. And, you know, it's a fairly expensive little tool, but there, there's ways that your, um, you know, your um, dealership that you deal with, or your supply house, will be able to help you out with that. 
but what I need to do is make sure during a PM that this, this surface here has been cleaned up. So one of the tools I can use besides sand cloth is a top post battery brush. I can slide this over the top, be able to turn it, and it polishes up the surface again and gets any type of corrosion, especially if you're living uh, on the coastal areas where you've got a lot of salt water, a lot of salt you know, um, spray in the air. It'll corrode this up pretty good. You'll get a lot of white oxidation built up on there. But also, inside here on your power head, the power head's gonna get, um, gonna get corroded too because these, these parts here have got a neodymium magnet inside it and the little shiny spots inside here are a steel conductor. So I can take that same top post battery brush, pull the cap off of it, put it inside, give it a few twists, and that'll clean it all back up. And now I'm going to be ready to go for a while. Uh, like I said, in, in some of the coastal areas, you're going to have to do this quite often. I've got a few systems down on the Gulf Coast. It's about every six to eight weeks, these are having to be cleaned on their, their multi-port mini split to keep the system operational. Now this part here, it's being controlled. The EEV valve is being controlled by a couple thermistors. They're going to be on the indoor coil. One's going to be on your suction line. One's going to be on the liquid line. And it's monitoring the temperature of the refrigerant that's passing through this valve. Um, so that way it knows how to, you know, to be able to open it up and be able to control it to be able to control a suction superheat. Now I do have a new tool that I'm trying out. It's electronic. It runs off a 9 volt battery that's going to be able to um, try to unstick some of these. I haven't had a chance to really put it to work yet, so we'll do that in a future video. Now normally the power heads that are controlling this are powered by 12 volts DC. So it's firing on that 1, 2, 3, 4 to common, um, just pulses of 12 volts DC and it's either moving in a clockwise or a counterclockwise position to open and close this valve. If you'd like to see more videos, you know, please like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any comments or questions or, or would like to see mo some other type of video from us, uh, just drop me a line. And I appreciate it. Thanks.